Hello everybody, I'm Jill and welcome to Grace Kids Online and to the adventure of following Jesus. Last week we started a new series called 5K Run the Race. Well, in this series we are discovering that to run the race of life you need to train and grow stronger every day. And you can show commitment by making a plan and putting it into, it into practice. Now, if you want to run a long race like a 5K, it requires a lot of commitment. The training, the cross training, running in the heat, running in the cold, running in the rain, you really have to be committed to see your plan through. Well, let us go and join our friends from America to hear what God has to say to us about running in this race of life. my best start yet. Hey there, I'm Erica and I'm training for a 5k race and it's taking a lot of commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. There are so many things to think about with a training plan. Racing doesn't just take your legs, it takes your whole body, it takes your eyes and even your ears. If you don't listen well for the starting horn. <laughs> 
point twenty-nine seconds. If you don't listen, you could get off to a late start. Ooh, and check this out. So the five k I'm training for doesn't stick to the road. After the first mile, it takes off through a park, right, across a field, then up a steep hill and through the woods. I'll have to keep my ears tuned for everything. I'll demonstrate. Alexa, play my race soundtrack. Playing race soundtrack. Here I am, running down the road. Oh, oh yeah, okay. I gotta listen for faster runners behind me. It's only polite to get over and let them by. Oh. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, oh, what? There aren't supposed to be bikes on this course. But if I hear one going rogue, I'm definitely going to get out of the way. <laughs> it's fine. <clears throat> Ooh, water station. I've got to stop and rehydrate. <sighs> Back to it. Um, what's that? <laughs> I don't know that sound. Alexa, what's that sound? That is a bear chasing you. Bear? No way! There couldn't be any bears on the race course, could there? Oh, Alexa, turn off! Huh. In today's story, you'll hear a parable Jesus told about one guy who listened well and one guy who didn't. I'll be listening to something else. Alexa, play a podcast on bear safety. Playing How Not to Get Eaten by a Bear podcast. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Verses 24 through 29. After Jesus was baptized and spent time alone in the wilderness, he returned to Galilee. There he began teaching and gathering his disciples. Great crowds began to follow Jesus everywhere he went. So one day he climbed up a mountainside and sat down to teach his closest friends. Many others showed up to listen. You are the light of the world. This is quite the sermon on the mount. Jesus shared all kinds of wisdom about the way God wants us to live. He finished with a vivid word picture. So then, everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. If Jesus gave us this example today, it might sound something like this. There were once two men who got an excellent deal on fabulous beachfront lots. One wise. What of you? And one. Well, foolish. Ooh, no, I can swim with the sharks before breakfast. <laughs> they both drew up plans for their dream home, but the wise man surveyed his property carefully. Better build back from the beach a little. Looks like we've got solid rock up here for the foundation. The foolish man had other ideas. I want one of those amazing beach cottages where the fish swim right up to your door. But both men got to work. The wise man met with the builder for his new home. I'd suggest steel beams. Can you bolt them directly into the rock? Absolutely. Excellent. Let's go. The foolish man once again had other ideas. I like to think of my home as a work of art. Build it only out of uh, things you find on the beach. Uh, driftwood, shells, oh, dried seaweed. <laughs> you want me to build you a house out of seaweed? You can braid it or something. I'd suggest something more durable for the foundation, like a uh, rock. <laughs> Don't be so stuffy. We're creating art. Well, okay. At last, the two homes were complete. The wise man moved into his home high up on the rock. Good book. Fresh lemonade. Salty sea breezes. I'm all set. The foolish man moved into his house right on the beach. Seaweed thatching, exquisite driftwood posts, shell columns. <laughs> I am a true artiste. Within a short time, 
dark clouds begin to form on the horizon. Looks like I better pull down the storm windows. Oh, goody. I can enjoy the gentle rain on my driftwood porch while communing with the fish at my doorstep. Ah. The winds began to pick up. Raindrops spatted against the shore. High on the rock, gale force winds battered the wise man's home. But it stood strong and sturdy. On the beach, though, waters began to rise. Yippee! I get to have one of those tropical huts with the water underneath. Yeah! The winds and waves beat against the foolish man's house. Uh, uh, where did I put my magic rainbow and umbrella? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm just gonna get out of here. The waves sucked away the sand beneath the house, and the wind whipped against the tipsy driftwood frame, and the entire structure collapsed. The foolish man stood drenched on the beach, staring at the remains of this house. Oopsie. On the mountainside, Jesus explained exactly what it all meant. So then... Everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man. He builds his house on the rock. The rain comes down, the water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, but it does not fall. But everyone who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man. He builds his house on sand. The rain comes down. The water rises, the winds blow and beat against that house, and it falls with a loud crash. The crowd listening to Jesus stared in amazement. He teaches with authority, like he's really in charge. Yeah, nothing like the other teachers. Jesus had spent the entire day explaining the way God wants us to live. His closing word picture made it clear. Anyone who puts the teaching of Jesus into practice builds their life on a foundation that will always stay solid, no matter what storms may come. When you're training for a race, you need to learn how to hear what's around you. When you're training for life, hearing is a lot more than just taking in some sounds. You need to learn how to hear from God. But how do you do that? How do you hear from someone who can seem big and far away? Hello? Here's what's cool. God is big, it's true, but he isn't far away. His son Jesus made it possible for us to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. And God gave us a way to hear from him anytime we want. This book, the Bible, is filled with the words of God written down by many different people over hundreds of years. Reading the Bible is one of the best ways to discover what's true and important. It can help you know God better, and it can help you see if there's something in your life that you need to change. You can hear from God like this, like this, or like this. You can hear from God through songs, through other people, maybe even in nature. Ah! Yeah, be careful in nature. So, practice hearing from God. Read your Bible or have someone read it to you. If you don't have a Bible or if you have questions about what you should read, ask a small group leader or someone you trust. They'll be excited to help you build your training plan to hear from God. So, here's the one thing to remember today. Practice hearing from God. When you practice listening to God's words, it can help you discover what it looks like to love God and love others each day. I hope that's training you all can bear. <gasps> Point 19 seconds! That's gotta be some kind of record! See you next time! Oh, wait, that's not what that is. Wow, you know, it is so amazing that we serve a God and we can be friends with a God who talks to us and we can hear from him. And you know, in these days, we have it easier than ever to hear from God. We can read the words of God from the Bible whenever we want to. We can just pick it up. 
We can use our phones. If your moms or dads have a phone and there's a Bible app on the phone, you can hear from God from reading the Bible on your phone. Or even on the laptop or computer, the Bible can be on there. It's so amazing that we can hear from God in, 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 in various ways. Let us practice hearing from God. Can you say that with me? Practice hearing from God. Now, sometimes it is hard to hear from God, but let us ask him to help us to have open ears, to recognize his voice, and to hear what he has to say to us. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are a God that is so personal. We thank you that you are a God who loves to speak to his children. And we know, God, that sometimes it's hard to hear your voice. There are so many voices that are speaking to us during the day. But help us to recognize your voice. Help us to practice just being still and listening for that still, small voice in our hearts. And help us to know when you are speaking to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you, everybody, for watching today. I really do hope that you enjoyed yourselves and that God spoke to your heart. Now, don't leave because after this, there'll be an activity that you can do to help you remember this message. And moms and dads, don't forget to catch the Faith at Home video that you can watch and help your children to live out this message throughout this week. And if you have joined us for the very first time, we would love to connect with you. Our details will be on the screen. And so please can you pop us an email or connect with us and we would love to find out more about you and respond to you. So have a great week, everybody. Bye. It's activity time. This time we have two activities. The first one is if you are in grade one, two, or three, there is an activity for you that you can download from the website and print out. And there's another activity if you are in grade four, five, six, or seven. There's a separate activity for you to do that you can download and print from the website. Have fun, everyone.